grace, mercy, and peace may it be multiplied unto you. This is Apostle Elliot. I uh, just want to take a moment to give a word of revelation on one word that we're uh, very familiar with, I believe, in the body of Christ, and that's the word grace. Um, oftentimes we will use this terminology, but uh, I want to make sure, especially for those who may not have foundation on the term, what, what it means, what it implies, uh, so that in uh, the use of it, as well as in our discernment of when it exists, we kind of are more foundational. So in that, the term grace, uh, it appears in the Old Testament in Hebrew, as well as in the New Testament in Greek. And I think our first location that you may find it in scripture is around Genesis chapter six, verse eight. Uh, but in that, throughout the Old Testament, there's one word that's used and it's shin. Uh, and shin means kindness or favor. So usually um, we, we can look at grace being uh, granted by the Lord God. And then sometimes we may use that term also regarding people when they do something kind towards us or they do uh, something that that is deemed to show favor to us because that is its intent in, in the Hebrew to to uh, be kindness or favor that is granted. And in some instances, when we usually articulate grace according to the Lord God, we may also say that it's unmerited favor, meaning that it's, it's kindness or favor that's, that's shown us or given us without us necessarily having to earn it. Um, but if I can go a little bit further, I, I like the depth of how it is in the Greek to really uh, cause it to resonate with a person. Now, um, in the Greek, the word is charis, and it once again means favor or goodwill, but it is favor or goodwill or kindness shown as a result of being governed by divine power. Or if I may put that in layman's term, it is a favor or kindness that is shown or given based on one being under divine influence or being uh, uh, able to be guided by the Lord God or to be guided by his presence. Um, you know, the, the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, his grace is sufficient. Um, so uh, when, when I understand that the favor of the Lord God that is being granted to me uh, is uh, not, not only unearned, but it is based upon me being submitted to being under the influence of him to warrant the kindness and uh, the favor to be placed upon my life. So oftentimes people may miss that uh, when it comes to understanding uh, grace, how grace works and how grace really manifests in our life. Um, because, you know, not saying that, that the Lord God cannot grant kindness to individuals who are not operating in the will. I would never cap what God can and can't do. However, for us as the believer, one of the most powerful and resonating things regarding uh, a continual flow of grace or godly kindness being shown us is us being under the influence of his divine power in the things that we do that grant grace or kindness to be given unto us. And if you think about it, it's kind of the same, same thing when it comes to when individuals impart grace to us, oftentimes it's due to the fact that we've done something um, that uh, we've taken advantage of their influence or their guidance or their wisdom that now deems as they look back and they reflect on us doing what, what they gave us insight to do, their heart is always kind of moved or, or they have compassion to want to do something greater for that individual for, for doing what they're giving guidance on. So with that, I just wanted to drop this word out there uh, this morning in order to bless whoever is listening and maybe wondering and, and trying to 
uh, uh, conceptualize what grace is uh, and what, what kind of drives it or how it works in the life of the individual or the believer. Amen. So with that being said, blessings to you. Uh, may you have an awesome day and let these words hopefully bring you into a greater place in Kim and your understanding as you move towards your eternal existence with the one true God. Amen, amen, and amen.